Hi guys, so assalamualaikum and hello. So we're going to finish off chapter 4 with 4.3 and 4.4 today. So today we're going to go into isomerism, okay? Alright, so these are your learning objectives. So we have def some defining, isomerism, constitutional, isomerism, or structural isomerism. Then you have stereoisomerism. And you have these six different types of structure and isomers okay so you can um make different types of isomers and then you have to know what uh, is this trans isomerism okay this occurs for um carbon carbon double bonds or carbon carbon bond in cyclic compounds okay Right, then you have to know what is a chiral center or chirality center. It's when your carbon has four different substituents. Okay, and then you need to know a little bit about optical activity. Whether your molecule can rotate plane polarized lights, right? Oh yeah, and finally you have to know how to draw a pair of enantiomers using 3D formula. This is simple jet. Alright, so first of all, we have to know what is isomerism. So isomerism is the existence of when your compound has the same molecular formula, but different structural formulas, okay? So molecular formula is your actual uh, number of atoms and number of atoms. Structural formula is how you arrange your... Your... Um, at your molecule, okay? Your atoms. Okay, so isomers is basically the compounds, okay? That has the same molecular formula and different structural formula. It means that um, those molecules have the same molecular formula, tapi cara also so lain, okay? So there are different types of ways you can have um, different isomers. So here you have structural isomers and then you have stereoisomers. And then under structural, you have three types. They are chain, positional, and functional group isomerism. And then under stereoisomerism, you have diastereoisomerism and enantiomerism. Okay. Under diastereo, you have cis trans isomerism and other diastereoisomers. So. First of all, let's look at structural isomerism or also known as sorry, constitution, constitutional isomerism or also known as structural isomers. Okay? They are isomers that differ in their connectivity. That means that how you connect your atoms, okay, your bond, bonds together. So how is the sequence in which your atoms are bonded together? Okay? Yang mana dulu? Okay. So, you have three chain, positional dengan functional. So, let's first look at chain. So, chain, these isomers will differ in the carbon skeleton. So, ingat that your carbon skeleton, um, dia akan uh, berbeza. Okay. So, they have the same functional group but belong and belong to the same homologous series. Have same chemical properties. Because you still have the same functional group but different physical properties, alright? So, maksudnya mesti awak ada branch yang berbeza-beza. So, let's say right here for this example, they ask you to draw the chain isomers for C5H10 molecular formula, alright? So, you have to first start with the longest carbon chain, Okay? So, start with the easiest one, which is the longest carbon chain, that is five, chain, uh, 5 carbons. So, right here, we have pentane. You draw the longest carbon chain. And next, what you do is, you make branches, okay? From, okay, daripada 5 ni, awak tak boleh buat branch dah. And then, that means that you take out one branch, okay, one carbon. And then, you draw 4 carbon chains. So, for carbon chains, how many different branches can you make? Okay. Right. So, you can only make one. Sebab kalau awal letak sini, okay, yang ni, kalau awal letak sini, it will be the same as the previous one, five carbon chain. So, if you put it here pula, 
it will be the same as two metal butane as well. Okay, so there's only one way to draw two metal butane lah. And then you take out another metal group. Okay, your carbon, C three, and then you letak lagi another branch. Okay, so basically you are this one you have to practice and trial and error lah. So here you have two two. Okay, two two because one two three, one two three. So two two is the position of this metal group at the second carbon chain. Di, metal. That means you have two metal groups attached to the second carbon. Propane, your longest carbon chain. Okay. Itu nanti kita belajar naming dekat dalam alkene alkene. Okay. Next, you have positional isomers. So positional isomers. Is when your isomers have substituent groups in different positions in the same carbon skeletal. So that means that if you have um five carbon skeleton, kan? Tapi apa yang berbeza is your um position of substituent group. Okay, let's see. Okay. So let's say here you have C five H eleven Cl. How does it look like? You will start with. The longest carbon chain. So let's say you have five carbons, kan? So kita draw. CH three. Ini saya buat condensed structure je. CH two, CH two, CH two. One two three four, five. CL. Okay. So you have five, four, three, two, one. Carbon. So, ini kira satu, the first one, sebab it is attached to Cl. So, this will be one, chloro, pen, tin. Okay. Your, um, your compound, you can start with uh, the lowest number. Okay. Alright. So, this is your first position isomer when your chlorine is attached to the first carbon. So, let's try Mana lagi awak boleh letak? The second position of isomer. Awak boleh letak your carb chlorine dekat mana? Second? Carbon. Kan? Dia akan jadi compound yang berbeza. So, this will be CH3. CH2. CH2. CH. CH. C. H. C. 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 Pentin. Okay. Okay. Boleh move lagi tau punya CL tu. Boleh move kan. So. Add the third carbon. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Macam tu eh. So ini 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So basically now your CL is at the third carbon. So nama dia. 2, uh, sorry, 3 dra dash chloropentene. Okay, chloropentene tu sambung. Alright, that is position isomer. So, let's say kalau dia minta macam ni. So, the first one is C4H8. C4H8 ni uh, macam apa? CN, H2, N. Okay, so maksudnya itu adalah al Kin. Okay. Yang ni. C8H8. Macam. Macam apa? Kalau benzene. C6H6. Dia punya ratio of. Uh, hydrogen dengan carbon. Almost the same. Okay. So ini maksudnya apa? Ni mesti ada. Must have a benzene ring. Okay. Kalau benzene. C6H6. So. Test lah sikit, okay? So, the first one, C4H8 tu. So, sekarang functional group awak apa? I mean, substituent awak yang berbeza is hydrogen dengan... um Hydrogen kan? Hydrogen and the metal group. Okay. So, you start with um the simplest one. CH3. CH2. CH. Double bond. CH2. Okay. So let's say you start, you must start 
with um one dekat mana ada functional group 1 2 3 4 so what is this cuba kira betul tak punya number of hydrogen and carbons betul kan so this is 1 bu tin okay 1 meaning that your um double bond is attached to the first carbon okay so what if we position this um okay this function group at the back line this will be kat tengah pula it will be 2 bu tin sebab okay 1 2 3 4 so you take this number okay Boleh buat lagi ke? Tak kan? Kalau letak sini, it will be the same as this one. Alright. Okay. This one, CH10 ni macam mana? Because I told you that you will have a benzene ring. So let's first draw our benzene ring. Okay. So, C6, H6. So let's say if you have a metal group out tengok eh dia punya carbon kalau benzene ada 6 so ini ada lagi 2 ok so maksudnya awak ada let's say CH10 tolak dengan C6H6 maksudnya awak ada lagi 2 carbon ok 2 more carbons so let's see if you put a metal group here and a metal group here Okay, so now you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, sekarang ada 8 carbon. So, apa nama awak punya molecule ni? Kiralah dia punya number of hydrogen so that awak percaya saya. <laughs> Actually for you to know lah. Okay. Nama dia dimethyl benzene. 1, 2 dimethyl benzene. Okay, sebab your substituents, your methyl groups are attached to first and second carbon of your ring. Okay, boleh position lain tak? Hmm. Boleh position. Okay. Dekat sini. Metal awak. Instead of kat sini. Okay. So dia jadi 1, 3. Macam ni. So this is 1, 3 dimethyl benzene. Okay. Ini actually ada nama lain juga. Tapi nanti kita belajar dekat benzene lah. Okay. One more boleh tak buat? Boleh kan? Kat sini. Dengan kat sini. Okay. Boleh? So that will be 1,4 dimethyl benzene. Alright. So basically your um, positioning your um, position of apa ni? Your substituents. Okay. At different places. Substituents are what? Alright. Okay. So ini lagi Ni awak buat sendiri lah. So, kalau dia minta chain, maksudnya awak akan start daripada longest carbon chain. And then, awak akan buat branches. And then, move your branches. Okay. Positional, maksudnya awak akan change position of your Awak start jugalah dengan longest carbon chain. Okay. And then awak buat apa? And then you will change position of substituent. In this case, awak boleh substituent apa? CL, okay? So, try doing that. So, your chain isomers, you should have... um. 
to sorry you should have um four fourteen isomers and you should have four position isomers okay all right function check check time why do I feel like it's not recording it <laughs> salam Okay, so now functional group isomers. So these isomers have different functional groups. And they belong to different homologous series but with the same general formula. So basically, awak ada contoh eh. Ini um, functional group yang sama as in OH. Okay, C double bond O. Contoh. Tapi, they are different classes of compounds. Okay, the general formula is sama. Faham tak? Okay. So, awak kena look out lah kalau awak ada this kind of general formula. That means that it must be alcohol and ether. Okay. So, satu isomer is an alcohol. Satu lagi is an ether. Okay. Kalau macam ni, maksudnya, awak punya general formula, that means that one of the isomer can be aldehyde and the other one can be ketone. Alright? And so on. So these are the examples. So you can look through one by one. So if you look here, here you have the same molecular formula but the first one is an alcohol. So it looks like this. It is an ethanol. And then another isomer that you can make is an ether. Maksudnya awak change the position of your atoms to how they, they are bonded. So since they are different functional groups, so this is called functional group isomers. Okay? Okay, tengok lain lain. Alright, so now we have stereoisomers. So tadi you have upper um, chain isomers kan? Okay, so that thing structural, sorry, structural isomers. So the second branch is stereoisomers. So stereoisomers are isomers with the same structure but differ with respect to the arrangement of the atoms in space. That means in space ni maksudnya orientation dia lah, 3D orientation dia ke, okay. Atau um, dia ada, dia boleh reflect each other ke tak, macam tu, okay. So, you have two types. You have di stereoisomers dengan enantiomers. Okay. So, ingat bahawa stereo ada di dengan enantiomers. Alright. So, the first one is di stereoisomers. So, di stereoisomers are isomers which are not mirror images of each other. That means that if you have um, A and then I will reflect it, it is not the same kat sebelah, uh, the mirror image is not the same, okay it is different, so you have two types uh, two classes of diastereoisomers you have cis trans isomers and you have other diastereoisomers, molecule with two or more chiral carbons so let's look at cis trans isomers it is also known as geometric isomers and it occurs in ini penting Alkenes and cyclic compound. Alright. So you need to be a, an alkene or cyclic compound in order to have cis trans isomers. Okay. So, dia ni macam mana? What do they differ in? They differ by groups being on the same side. Itu adalah cis isomer or opposite sides. Okay. Of the side of rigidity carbon-carbon double bond in a molecule. So basically, your carbon-carbon double bond ni, okay, when you have macam ni, carbon-carbon double bond, you cannot rotate this bond, okay? Awak tak boleh rotate. Contoh kalau awak ada single bond macam ni, awak boleh rotate dia, okay? Awak boleh rotate. Tapi ini, asal awak ada multiple bond, it is a planar. Dia tak boleh di-rotate. Okay, so dia rigid. Dia... Tak ni lah, dia tak rotate. Okay? Contoh kan, kalau macam ni kan. A, B, A, B. Yang ni boleh rotate. So, nanti awak punya molecule contoh lah eh. Dia jadi macam ni. Contoh saya rotate sana kan. Dia tukar tempat. Contoh. Boleh rotate macam tu. 
Okay Tapi kalau macam ni Ni tak boleh rotate Okay Cover-cover double bar ni tak boleh rotate So In order to have Cis trans isomerism There are two requirements You must have a restricted rotation Of a carbon-carbon double bond In your alkene Or a carbon-carbon single bond In a cyclic compound So another thing Kalau awak ada cyclic compound Okay macam ni Ini pun um, Stay as planar Dia tak boleh di rotate kan Or tak boleh lipat-lipat dia okay Tak boleh rotate So dia rigid Okay And each carbon atom of a site of restricted rotation has two different groups attached to it. Okay, so maksudnya, macam ni, dia ada two different groups. Two different groups. Okay. So, let's look at cis-trans isomers in carbon-carbon double bond. So, you have two butene. So, here, butene means that you have four carbons. So... On your left here, this is a cis 2 butene, cis isomer. Because if you look here, okay, di sini satu, dua, tiga, empat. Awak punya hydrogen dengan hydrogen ni, it is on the same side. Okay, ini kira cis. Alright, cis. But here you have trans 2 butene. So if you look here. Your hydrogen is not on the same side as your other hydrogen. They are on different sides. Okay? So, this is a transbutene. Okay? Faham? Itu je. Beza dia. Cis, same side. Okay? Ini kira same side. Trans, opposite sides. Okay? Awak kena merantasi. Sana. Okay? Right. So, can you tell whether this compound, trimethyl 2-pentene, is which one is cis and trans? Which, has, which is the cis-trans isomers? So, tengok sini. Dengan sini. Okay. Kalau macam ni, since these two are on the same side, Okay, are they on the same side? What do we call it? We call it cis isomers. Okay. How about this one? Two substituents, but they are on the opposite side. Ting, ting, ting. This is your trans isomers. Okay. Okay, how about this one? Can you tell? 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane. So, sekarang kita ada cyclic compound. So, for cyclic compound, sama je juga cara awak tengok dia. So, here you have macam ni kan. So, dia, this bond is, you cannot rotate it. Tak boleh rotate. So, maksudnya awak boleh ada existence of um, cis-trans isomers. Lagi satu, awak ada substituents, two substituents, different substituents at each carbon. So, oh, my hydrogen and hydrogen, they are on the same side, right? So, this is a cis, one, two, di, metal, blah, 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 cyclohexane. Ini pula is a, they are on the opposite side. So, this is a trans, one, two, di, metal, cyclohexane, alright? How about this one? 1,3-dichlorocyclopentane. 1,3-dichlorocyclopentane. Okay, kalau yang ni, macam mana nak tengok? You akan tengok lah. Hydrogen and hydrogen. Are they on the same side? Yes, okay. So, this is kira cis juga. This is isomers. Ini pula, they on the, are on different sides kan? Okay, boleh nampak kan? So, ini adalah trans. Okay. Alright. So, geometric isomerism, cis trans isomers, is not exhibited if one of the doubly bonded carbons attached to two identical atoms or group of atoms. So, maksudnya, doubly bonded carbon atoms tu adalah these carbon atoms lah. 
So let's say kalau kat sini this carbon atom awak ada two different atoms or group of atoms. Kan? So itu side tu dah okay. Tapi kalau awak tengok side ni your carbon here is attached to the same group of atoms CH3. So maksudnya tak boleh ada cis trans isomerism. Okay. Kat sini pun sama. And another one right here. Okay. The same carbon is attached. Uh, the, the same carbon. Same substituents. Same kind of substituents. On the same carbon tak boleh. Okay. No cis trans. No cis trans. Okay. Alright. So next. Next. Seroisomer is the enantiomers. So enantiomers ni, we must remember mirror. Okay. So every object it has a mirror image. Okay. Kalau reflect dia akan ada mirror image. Tapi your mirror image and the object itself may or may not be superimposable. So what is superimposable? Okay. You can look at your left. So um, enantiomers. Enantiomers are molecules like your left and right hand. So, tengok tangan awak. Left and right hand. Okay. They are mirror images of each other. Okay. But they are not identical or superimposable. So, that means that enantiomers cannot be superimposed. Superimposed apa? So, maksudnya bila awak overlap atau awak tindih awak punya tangan. Okay. Um, you will see this, 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 this uh, apa ni? view lah. Maksudnya dia tak apa um, awak boleh nampak lah yang dia tak bertindih. Okay? It cannot overlap each other perfectly. So, they, it means that they are different um, actually different objects lah. Faham tak? Tangan kanan yang kiri awak different objects kan? Okay. So, bezalah dengan this one, non-enantiomers. Okay. Yang enantiomers ni, maksudnya awak panggil dia chiral objects. It means that it has a chiral center. So, enantiomers are mirror images of each other but they are not, but not superimposable. Therefore, it must have a chiral center. So, we'll look later what is chiral center. Beza dengan ni, Awak punya botol ni, awak reflect dia. Okay. So, when you put it over each other, it cannot be superimposed. Okay. So, that means that, it, it can be superimposed, sorry. So, that means that it is not an enantiomer. They are basically the same objects. So, it does not have an a, a chiral center. So, it is a chiral object. Okay. non superimposable if it's mirror image due to existence of chirality center. So, dia tak boleh bertindih with each other because that shows that it has a chiral center. So, what is a chiral center? Chiral center is a carbon atom in a molecule which is bonded to four different types of atoms. So, ini A, B, C, D. Okay. So, this carbon... Here, this center here is called your chiral center, chiral carbon. Or some, it is also denoted with this asterisk. So, maksudnya, ini adalah enantiomer lah. Okay, dia ada chiral center right here with four different substituents. Okay. So, here you have your 3D structure of a chiral molecule and a chiral molecule. So let's look apa beza dia. Okay, beza dia for this one, bromo, chloro, fluoro, methane. Basically, you have bromine, chlorine, fluorine and hydrogen attached to this carbon. So, okay, so it has four different substituents. Itu dah menunjukkan yang dia chiral. So let's look whether it can be superimposed or not. So, kalau chiral molecule, it cannot be superimposed. Okay? Maksudnya, dia enantiomers. Okay? 
So when you reflect the molecule, you will get this view. Okay, this molecule. Okay, and when you do a 180 degree rotation, you get this molecule. So, cuba awak tindih this molecule right here with your molecule yang ni. So, bila awak try tindih, awak akan tengok yang okay, awak punya bromine dan chlorine, they are not on the same position. So, they cannot be superimposed. Alright. So, that means they are in an show mirrors. Okay. And they also have a chiral center right here. Denoted by this asterisk. Alright. So, right here, a, a chiral molecule. Kalau tengok sini. Awak tengok terus pun, awak tahu yang dia ada 1, 2, 3 je. Group of substituents yang berbeza. These two are the same. So, tengok eh. When you reflect the object. Okay. You will get this. And then you rotate it 180 degree. Pak, macam tu. Faham kan? Rotate 180 degree. Let's say ni kat side ni. So, sekarang awak rotate dia. Macam tu. So, ni sekarang kat sini. Okay. Alright. So, if you... Take this molecule yang awak dah reflect tu and superimpose it on this one. You can see that it is superimposable. Can be superimposable. Bila tindih, they are basically the same molecule, same objects. So that means that a non-superimposable molecule will will not have a chiral center. There is no chiral center. Okay. Alright. So let's see. Now you have to you have to know how to draw a pair of enantiomers. Okay. So you have two bromobutane. Kat sini awak dah ada um, the structural formula. So let's look at this carbon right here. This carbon has one, two, three, four substituents and they are all different that means that it has a chiral center right here okay so how do we start we start with you have to draw it in 3d so 3d maksudnya awak ada um, bond yang biasa and then you have bond yang keluar daripada plane of paper and then you have bond yang ke belakang. Okay. Kalau letak ke bawah pun tak apa. Boleh. So let's say I'll letak mirror, in, mirror kat sini. So I'll just draw the same thing as I did. Okay. A reflection of it. Ni terpaksa lah saya ikut. Patutnya macam ni awak. Macam ni. Macam ni. Macam ni. Ke bawah. So, look at sini. <laughs> yeah, sorry. God. Okay. Macam tau. So, and then awak akan letak je lah awak punya substituent. So, I'll start with CH3. And then hydrogen. Br. And then C. H2. CH3. So, maksudnya kat sini pun, it will be the same um, substituents, okay? Ni CH2, CH3. Okay? So, here you have your mirror and your pair of enantiomers. Okay? These two. Macam tu je, simple je. Okay, so sekarang kita tengok. Boleh tak awak? With our identify whether they are a pair of enantiomers or not. Okay, what are we gonna do? Color enantiomers, it must have a chiral center. Okay, maksudnya carbon awak ada four different substituents. Okay, if you look here, these two are the same kind. So this is non enantiomers. So, awak cubalah um, reflect pasal 
I would superimpose. Will you get the same? Will you get to superimpose or will you not? So this one not enunciation, so maksudnya actually aku boleh simple superimpose, okay? Rotate yang ni hundred eighty degree, pasal letak atas yang ni. Okay, right here, peni tengok substituen sawat semua different kan? So this must be a pair of enunciations, okay? Yang ni pula macam mana? H F B R, and you have this. Alkyl group, ethyl. So they are all different, kan? So ini pun sama, a pair of enantiomers, right? So enantiomer compounds, kenapa kita nak kena tahu? Let's say sometimes dalam soalan tu dia bagi hint ke awak yang um, dia ada beberapa karakter. So apa karakter enantiomer compounds? They are chiral molecules, have identical physical properties, and have the ability to rotate plane polarized light. Okay, so these three are the hints yang nak bagi tahu yang out me compound tu, they have enantiomers. They are enantiomers. Okay, so awak tahu lah yang awak boleh draw enantiomers. Okay, bila dia bagi tahu dia ada these three characteristic. Alright, so pasal polarimeter ni, I think you can uh, find it... Um, Find further about it on your own if you want. So basically, enantiomers they can rotate plane pol polarized light. Okay, so dari pada sini awak ada awak punya light source. This is the unpolarized light. So bila awak letak awak punya molecule kat dalam awak punya sample tube ni right here. Okay, this is the polarizer. Nanti awak punya organic molecule tu dia akan boleh kena Rotate, dia dia boleh rotate this light. Okay, so dia nampak tak? Ini light awak, dia rotate. Okay, so maksudnya dia adalah enantiomer lah. Okay, so that's all about isomerism. Okay, so buat tutorials 5 to 10. See you in class.